Good morning, folks. We've got a tight solar eruption, news from around the world and up into deep, deep space. Let's start with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on the sun were very subdued. No eruptive behavior as the sunspots turn to the right out of view and solar flaring drops back out to flat line. The solar wind event is finally ending from the coronal hole. Very quiet streams. Little patch on the south may not hit us with its solar wind, but we could magnetically connect to that small coronal hole within about 24 hours. Soho caught a CME coming from just behind the eastern limb on the far side of the sun. It was a bit of a stealth eruption, as well being from the top loop arches above an incoming active region. The two circles are the pinched off loops that began spinning and forming helical structures which roll out to often appear as circular in the 2D representation. CME will miss Earth 90 degrees. Let's go to Papua New Guinea where the Manam volcano began erupting to kick off the week. It's on a remote island to the north of mainland. While the U.S. official climate report is missing due to the government shutdown, the European version headline can alternatively be read to say that the temperatures continue dropping off from the record El Nino to end 2015, after which the second, third, and now fourth place years form a ramp downward. Meanwhile, the snow and cold in Europe is at times hard to believe. There's going to be no break today as the setup creating this brutal situation is solid at the polar vortex level, the jet stream, and most importantly, the pressure cells at the surface, high and low, pushing Arctic air southward between them. And over the next 12 to 18 hours, they will do nothing but move southward themselves and drive that Arctic air down even into the Mediterranean once again, bringing those chances for snow and icy conditions. Up next is Hubble. We're jumping out to M33, the sister galaxy to the much grander M31 Andromeda. Although smaller, M33 has 10 times the star formation rates of its larger sibling, here we see the components that make it difficult to tell what's part of the galaxy and what's just in the way of the line of sight. As you might imagine, the public is yanking new worlds out of the Kepler data now that they have full access, especially because most of the pros are looking through TESS, which has found its longest period orbiting planet yet. Neptune sized and interesting to note, we are mostly finding very, very close in planets still have no real way to spot an Earth or Jupiter like situation like we've got in our own system. Top story comes as a picture says a thousand words and more from the ESA. This nova remnant surrounds a surviving star and is heavy in silicon dioxide, which makes up 60% of Earth's crust. And for the first time, we know that nova have been shown to produce the direct ingredient in glass and sand. Well, obviously, this has a little implication for a little series we've been cranking out here of late, Earth's Catastrophe Cycle. Episode 7 is underway on my end. And when you watch one of the episodes, you can get to every one of the other episodes from all of the episodes. They're all linked there for you. But the only way to talk to Dr. Dunning, Vote, and myself face-to-face -face about it is at OTF 2019. Hundreds already registered, and it's the one weekend of the year I actually get to have friends, which is nice. Best friends you could ask for, actually. We've got your wind maps, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 425 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.